it's me, Ma'am Rom, again. I made this video discussion for the benefit of those who can be able to join with our um, Google Meetings. So going to understand how historical paintings are relevant to our understanding in the Philippine history. And of course, what are the contributions of the different artists and um, how their work of art testified to the experiences of the Filipinos during their time. So, um, lesson three, focusing on focusing on historical paintings and the work of art of Juan Luna and Fernando Amorcalo. Um, in today's discussion, we are going to understand how historical painting is relevant to understand the Philippine history. So, unsa ang um, unsa ang important siya, unsa ang kanang unsa ang contribution sa mga historical paintings para mas masamtan nato ang um, Philippine history class. And um, yun, historical paintings are we know that these are visual representations of concrete happenings on the life of people in a specific period. So, basically, ang mga ang historical paintings, they are an expression, okay? Their meanings are being communicated and expressed aesthetically. So, if we are to, to, kanang, to, to decipher the meaning of the painting, we will have an idea of, um, of about the background of the, the artist, the inspiration of the artist in making the painting, and of course, even the, the the idea of a specific period of time, okay, a specific event, for example. Okay, historical artworks, okay, or, or, or a primary sources cannot only be limited with, um, with experiences or personal accounts or testimonies. So, his primary sources can also be works of art like paintings and films, photos, or even um, sketches and caricatures. So, many some examples of the painting made by um, one of the most well-known artists, which is Fernando Amor Soria. Okay, to proceed, um, are paintings always considered a primary source? Now I want to listen. Or I want to hear from you guys, or I want to um, to know your insight about this question. So you can comment your answer after this video. You can write your answer on the comment section and answer this question. Okay, the first artist that we are going to deal to di to to, uh, to, um, to discuss is Juan Luna. So. We know that Juan Luna was a famous sculptor and a painter. Aside from that, he was also a political activist during his time, during the late 19th century. So he is also considered a master of Philippine artist for painting, which often depicted his sentiments for the country. So initially, he was trained as a teacher. Juan began his art apprenticeship in Manila's Academia di Dibujo y Pintura under the Filipino painter Lorenzo Guerrero. So, he traveled across Europe in Madrid, Spain in 1877 to continue his studies at the Real Academia de Bellas Artist de San Fernando and there he excelled in his classical styles of painting. So, he was able to produce, to produce a lot of historical paintings, two of which two of the most um, well-known painting or famous painting of Juan Luna was the Scolarium and the Parisian Life. So, ang Scolarium class, um, this is exhibited today in the Philippine National Museum in Manila. Okay, and just to share with you, I had this personal encounter with the, with, with, with the very um, exquisite um, painting of Juan Luna, the biggest all in canvas painting of Juan Luna, which is now exhibited in the Philippine Historical Museum. So I paid a visit last February this year before the lockdown happened. Because I have always been fascinated with Juan Luna's artwork. So upon learning that the, that the, that the um, 
popular yung most exhibited in the Philippines or in the Philippines. So, yun. I paid a visit to it. Personally encountered his amazing work of art. Okay, so the Spolario, it was made by Juan Novicio Luna, a, a masterpiece that was created in 1884. And it is one of the prize positions, a uh, prize position of the Philippine Amazon Museum today. So, pinakamahal ka, kasi pinakamahal na painting na nakakaroon sa Philippine Historical Museum. So, addressing two things from his artwork are the glorification of the genius and the grandeur of his artistic skills. So, by the way, um, Spolarium is a Latin word referring to a basement of the Roman Colosseum where the fallen and dying gladiators who fight to the death of the entertainment of the Roman oppressors are dumped and devoid of their worldly possessions. So, ang gladiator fighting kasi before was commonly, um, commonly done for entertainment. So, um, sa ano siya, specifically sa Rome. gladiator and the dying gladiator. Um, the warrior is being dragged, that, that was being dragged, according to some historians, can be represented as the Filipino. Not only those who fought, suffered, but also the family and the loved ones. So some people who lost someone during the Spanish ruling tell the, the tales they saw and some are with but are forgotten in darkness in the history. So, probably that is one of that is um, one meaning that can be um, interpreted on this picture, out from that picture. So whatever your insight about the picture, this one, even um, this um, lady, his character in the painting. Okay, so, comment in yung answer sa after ano nga video after yung listening to this video. Okay, so, the gladiator on the center can be depicted also as a Filipino, right? So, um, Filipino heroes who fought bravely during Spanish colonial time. Okay, um, basically this is a reflection of how Filipinos suffered, right? Suffered before on, in severe ordeal when, when, uh, with, with the abuses done by the Spanish ruler. Now the second painting is this one, Kanaklan. So 
unta ni siya. How do you understand it? So this is the Parisian life, also known as Interior Dion Cafe, also spelled as Interior Dion Cafe, or inside a cafe. But it was named Parisian life since it was, ano sa? It was made or it was painted when Juan Luna stayed in Paris in 1890. Um, okay, so now some historians believe that the Parisian life reflected or has a geographical likeness to the mirror image of the archipelago of the Philippines. Now, if you are to get a mirror, tapos it reflect niyo ang um, Parisian life. Ano ba siya? Para sa ano? Anang geographical? Nasa geographical likeness. geographical likeness with the the dates the ang details niya has a geographical likeness from that of the mirror image of the Philippine Archipelago. The Philippines or the nation during the time of Spanish colonization. So kung tanaw niya siya, the nation that is direct that is um, ano siya kanan? Gibihisan siya into a European name. So Somehow, it's a reflection of how European culture is being introduced to us, or being, um, kung baga, paano tayo binihisan in a European way. So, parang ganun yung meaning niya. While the level of the beer, okay. so, while the level of the beer in the table were also interpreted on how the Spanish take advantage of Some historians also um, believe that that um, even little object, tiny objects in the painting, such as um, the beer, somehow has also its meaning. How about the beer plus? Ayun. So na ada beer. Okay. Now let's proceed with Pulang Domor Solos. Um, Artwork. So, a few background of Fernando Amor Solo. Um, he delights people of his impressionistic styles or technique depicting idyllic country scenes, beautiful maidens, and colorfully dressed peasants planting or harvesting of rice. So, two of the most well-known paintings of Fernando Amor Solo are the Antipolo Fiesta and the Palay Maiden. So, maon ni siya ato ang i-contextually analyze. Let us first have an understanding of the Antipolo Fiesta. So, Antipolo Fiesta, the main focus is the pair, it's a pair of dancers in the field surrounded by rebellious, both young and old. So, if you can see, the the painting reflected a bountiful harvest. So, now we know that when Fiesta comes, when Fiesta comes, But it's a celebration of, um, of, of uh, most of the time, okay? Yes, the bar celebration of change. However, during that during the time of Spanish colonial era, the fiestas are not only celebrations of change, but also celebrations of good harvest, bountiful harvest, and abundant food. Okay. Antipolo Fiesta is the is an oil and canvas painting depicts a rural scene where a group of people are also showing a celebration during the Fiesta of in Antipolo. So um, we know that Fiesta can be very symbolic in town. So um, of course we are still celebrating Fiesta today. But how we celebrate fiesta today is different from how we celebrated before. So, fiesta celebration is probably one of the most enduring or, or, or celebrated legacy of 
Christian faith, right? Because, because normally we associate the celebration of fiestas with the celebration of, I know, we normally associate the celebration of fiestas along with saints, right? Like the Feast of San Jose, um, the, the Feast of, of Black Nazarene, iba ganun, fiesta ng San Isidro Labrador, ganun. And that is very Christian, right? That is very Catholic. And lastly, we have the Palay Maiden. So, Palay Maiden, known, also known as the Dalagang Bukid. So, this painting portrayed as provincial Filipina beauty on Dalagang Bukid during a rice harvest and dressed in and enveloped by the color of the Philippine flag. So, many historians believe that this Palay Maiden, okay, this Palay Maiden, is a reflection of the beauty of the Philippines or the beauty of the country since kung panawin niya sa class the palay made in his dress or the the, the colors that, was, the, uh, that were used in palay made in reflect that of the color of the Philippines flag so nasa yellow nai blue nai red and white a touch of white and of the, be- the beautiful face Filipino ba yung Filipina maiden? So, let's proceed. Um, now, what is your ano, interpretation? If I were to interpret the Palay maiden, um, for me, the maiden bears a signif- significance to Fernando Amor Solo's preference of beauty. Of course, we have different preferences. We have different perspective when it comes to beauty. Beauty is very subjective, right? So what is beautiful in my eyes, probably not the beautiful, not the definition of what is beauty for you. So, um, but somehow, for me, okay, Fernan, the Palay Maiden, basically, Fernando's Amor Solo's preference of Filipino beauty, where Amor Solo does not only conform to the Western standard of beauty, Mapute, matangkad, ganun. So, um, rather, he portrayed them to have a round face, not the oval one, which is typically known known for um, Western beauty. Okay? Um, the eyes should be exceptionally lively, and it portrays happiness. Not the dreamy and sleepy type that characterizes the Mongolian or the Western Eyes, not blue, okay? Nor, pa mga colors sa mga, nor ano, nor Irish light sa mga eyes, but brown or black, um, ano, hindi ko kung tapos. Brown eyes rather, and the nose should be of a blunt from, blunt or firm, firm and strongly marked. The, the ideal nose of, of, of a Filipina. Filipina beauty should not be necessarily um, a white, uh, should not always be a white complexion, but it is dark or brown kasi we are known to have a kayumangi color, right? Um, but of course, clear skin or fresh colored type is often witnessed when, when Filipina blushing. Yun. Tumakod na siya class ng typical Filipino. I don't know kung mo ba na ako. Filipino ba siya. Anyway, so I guess that's all. Yun, so um, basically class um, historical paintings speak so much of all the of all the possible things that somehow reflect the idea, the experiences during a specific period of time. So, ang relevant niya is that um, it has a message for the artist himself is communicating through his artwork. So, if we are 
um, if you are to appreciate art and you are very critical, of course, not a lacking interpretation about artwork. Now, if you are deep enough to grasp the meaning of an artwork, of course, um, not a historical relevance. And that is to understand the, the artist, the ideals of the artist, and the message that the artist is trying to convey in his art. My last question is, what is the relevance of the historical painting for you, ha? This is based on how you understand this discussion. What is the relevance of the historical painting in our understanding of the Philippine history? So you may... Um, this is, ano siya, this is graded as your participation. Um, comment your, since wala tayo meeting, wala tayo ka ng, wala tayo Google Meet related ano nga discussion. You may answer this question by commenting um, below this video. Ito lang, mag-comment lang. That's all.